Hello everyone, welcome to my channel and today we are going to talk about this drone. This is iFlight Nazgul Evoque V2 frame with Voxnail Moonlight kit installed on it. So this frame is specifically designed to hold DJI 3 Air unit and there were some challenges and compromises made during fitting Voxnail on it. So we will go through them and we will review some uh, drone footage and some better flight settings for this drone. So let's start. Now let's have a look on how it flies. So this is me flying over the horse track and you can still see some grains of sand on the drone um, when uh, we will disassemble it. So I think it flies well. It's a little bit unusual that it's not uh, well balanced in the center, so you have to get used to it. But overall it's okay. So this video is not supposed to be any kind of review of box nail and video quality on Moonlight Kit. Uh, it's uh, stabilized with Jara Flow and a little bit color graded, just slightly automatically color graded in OpenShot video editor. But I think it gives you a clue on how the drone flies anyway. Let's put our drone on scales. So it's four. 86 grams. So let's add props. It's 501 uh, with the props. And if we just add battery, it will be 721. That's the weight of the full drone we have here. That's how it looks when you plug it in. So if you can see there is no connection to peak and this one is showing GPS status and everything else is just showing battery status. I'll just turn on my radio. And so see, this is pretty much ready to fly in this state. Now let's remove top plate and remove one of the side plates, probably this one to talk about everything else. Now let's remove screws and uh, take out our top plate. So this is GPU camera mount. Overall, I must say the drone is a little bit uh, disbalanced in weight because everything is situated in a so uh, screws gone. Now just removing top plate. So top plate gone, and what we see now here is actually first thing is a back module which. Uh, actually powers on uh, Moonlight Kit. Uh, Moonlight Kit is not taking power out of uh, flight controller because like it's too much current to my like, to my mind. So I added separate back plate in here. So here we also have some LED uh, board and uh, actually a receiver uh, mounted in here. So this is iFlight uh, Blitz mini stack in here and actually 
Vox nail VTX, and uh, this is an anti spark filter which comes with iFlight frame. We also have Gap RC GPS module with accelerometer and magnetometer in here. Uh, basically, also uh, I have like a drone finder, but I haven't found any good place for this uh, finder anywhere in on the drone. So I made an, another compromise of putting it onto the arm. Not ideal, but we need access to this button every time we and uh, every time we unplug the battery because uh, we just need to stop it from beeping. Yeah, now let's uh, go and uh, remove side plate. And to remove side plate, we actually need to uns unscrew camera here because it just, you see, the shape of it is kind of like this. And you can't just uh, pull it up. So we need to unscrew uh, camera a little bit. So let's do this. It's a little bit tough in here, but we will do that anyway. Probably need to remove a second screw as well. Okay, here we go. So this is a side plate with LED strip and this is actually uh, very interesting how I finally mounted uh, VTX because if you see it's mounted upside down and so this frame has holes for 25 to 25 um, mount but holes are too small I had to basically drill them a little bit to make them a little bit uh, bigger and then I put longest screws in here, it's like around 20 millimeters, and I mounted uh, VTX upside down, because, so the top is actually here. Uh, and this is the bottom of the VTX, and you can see those uh, 20 by 20 mounting, mounting, hole, mounting holes, because uh, actually if you put it in uh, a correct way, the, those things are actually adding uh, all the space to uh, to the height of the uh, Voxnail VTX. So I made a decision and compromise to uh, mount it upside down. Also, it's you can see, yeah, this is um, anti-spark filter. So it's pretty tight here, not much space left. So all those wires. Uh, this is a closer look to back. There are some uh, wires. You see, I damaged one with my um, soldering iron a little bit. And the uh, LED board. And here's like, I think it's uh, SpeedyB Nano with um, LAN and uh, PA, like um, a low noise amplifier and power amplifier. It was better than just normal receivers so I put one like that and I have pretty long antenna in here because I didn't have like ideally uh, ideal antenna uh, ideal cable length for this but I put kind of whatever I got it's just a little bit long but there is nothing I can do here and actually because um, this VTX is wider and a little bit higher than uh, all three, I had to actually shave some plastic all uh, around here. So I was lucky. I yeah, like I was lucky that LED strip in here actually is on a correct height, so there is not too much much to shave in here. And mounting model that way actually like pretty much tightly fits uh, side plate height but I had to shave some plastic in here and here from the both sides and I had to shave some um, TPU 
material out of uh, those TPU uh, like printed mounts. That was like uh, another compromise and decision I had to make to fit it and make it uh, looking more or less nice. So basically that's it about uh, compromises I had to make. Uh, pros and cons. So the thing is the drone is not well balanced on uh, on the middle because of pretty much all the weight is going to the back part. Um, I don't have um, kind of uh, uh, stock Nazgul to check this, but I think it's also a little, it, it should be kind of disbalanced as well. And I think the reason for that is that it's supposed to fly with something like GoPro, which will balance the mount. But in uh, my case, uh, the further you can put battery here, in the, like up to this side, uh, the luckier you are, because not all the batteries are actually, for some reason, have the same length of pigtail, and uh, some of them are just mounted like this, and some I can really just put a little bit further to make like drone more balanced. So that's it. Uh, put your comments and suggestions uh, down below uh, under video comments. Uh, what else? I think that's it. And we can have a look at uh, beta flight setup now. Now let's have a look at our beta flight configuration. And what we'll start with would be to we go to presets tab and on preset sources we click add a new source and put the following configuration. GitHub URL and GitHub branch for iFlight presets. Uh, those made and maintained by iFlight. And as soon as we have those um, presets active, we can just go into presets and search for Nazgul F5 and we'll get those presets. Just pick and click save and reboot. After that, you will get some uh, pit tuning available, by, uh, which are default for uh, Nazgul. I've tried to play a little bit with those presets uh, based on Chris Rosser's videos on filter and pit tuning. But unfortunately, I'm not able to get any meaningful gyro data from black box. It just doesn't work for me. I've tried it with different flight controllers and it's all working good. But for you know, iFlight Blitz Mini, I just not able to get those data for some reason. Apart from that, let's briefly go through other tabs. So on the ports tab, we have um, our VTX running on UR3, it's MSP plus display port, that's standard setup for Voxnail, and we have GPS running on UR5. On configuration page, we have uh, 8 kilohertz speed loop frequency. It's okay to have it um, the same frequency as a gyro, and CPU load is a little bit high. It, it's around 60%, but that's fine, we can live with it. I also have accelerometer, barometer, and magnetometer enabled, and that's um, due to uh, GPRC GPS module has them all. Arming angle set to 180 degrees, which actually gives the ability to arm from any angle, which is good if you are stuck somewhere and you want to rearm your drone. Uh, also, D shot beacons configuration, we have everything enabled in here, and just to inform you on every issue. On um, power and battery, uh, there are no changes. Uh, however, I manually set um, amount of cells for uh, this drone uh, to six in CLI because I don't have 4S batteries. I only have 6S batteries. On a fail safe, safe tab, we have some GPS rescue setup. So what happens here? Uh, when we fail safe to stage one, which is uh, like as brief as one and a half second, uh, we quickly go into angle mode to align our drone and then we punch the throttle up to 1700, which uh, in theory gives us a boost, throttle boost, and we go up. And if we were behind some obstacle or some trees, 
you'll just gain control over your drone again. If not, GPS rescue comes into uh, play and it's pre-configured with some settings. Uh, on pit tuning, um, because I have only, because I have 4S motors, I limited output power to 66%, which is exactly what you have to do when you have uh, 6S batteries for and 4S motors. Uh, on receiver tab, make sure you have telemetry enabled. Apart from that, it's all by default. Motor tab, uh, make sure you have bidirectional bi directional dish shot enabled. You might need to fly, flash your ESC with um, uh, BlueJ firmware for that. Uh, but I think uh, iFlight Blitz comes with uh, some version of uh, Blue J already. I might be wrong though. Uh, on the LED strip, uh, I have uh, so we have seven addressable um, LEDs on the strip for I for Nazgul, and first six e I just have them set up uh, to show battery status, and the seventh I just set up for GPS status. Uh, it's more like an experiment to see how it uh, how that setup behaves. I I'm not using anything like in any useful manner because you can get everything from telemetry of, of your model in your uh, receiver. I think that's it about uh, Betaflight configuration. That's it for today. Thank you for watching and see you on the next videos. Cheers.